It was the scramble for Africa at the turn of the 19th and 20th century. The Europeans considered any part of the world they would conquer to be their right to exploit as they wished. However, once it had been conquered by one European power, any attempt by another power to control it would be considered an act of war that could have global consequences. As such, the Europeans sought treaties amongst themselves. No Africans were consulted, obviously, to conclusively determine which part of Africa belonged to whom. This is how Africans have been treated by these colonial rulers. The vast majority of these borders were agreed at the Berlin Conference in 1885, and this is the end result of Africa in 1913. The most important colours here are red for Britain and blue for France, and you'll notice that in most cases, the colour boundaries correspond exactly with modern national boundaries. These weren't country boundaries, these were the borders of European spheres of influence agreed upon after a variety of horse trading, prospecting, cartography, etc. decided upon in conferences in Europe. Countries that had smaller colonies like the Belgian Congo in yellow, Portuguese Angola and Mozambique in purple largely became independent in their current shapes. But however, the Spanish Sahara in pink, which the Spanish effectively abandoned and Morocco subsequently claimed, you know, while the local inhabitants felt that they should be granted their own independence as other colonies had been, this conflict remains unsolved and Morocco is the only country in the African Union due to its rejection of the tacit agreement not to mess with old colonial boundaries. You see, my dear friends, you've been divided to be a weak continent, a continent without any hope, a continent which is forever tackling issues such as poverty, man-made diseases such as AIDS, HIV, and even the Ebola virus, which was created in the United States of America by these mad scientists. Just look at what you can fit into Africa, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, China, Great Britain, United States and Mexico. Does the fake world map ever tell you that? The unification of Africa will not only benefit Africa greatly, but also become a threat to the other industrialized countries, especially in Europe and Western Hemisphere. I mean, just imagine putting together your collective resources and intellect for your own betterment and actually making those countries that currently exploit your vast wealth pay for it. I see Africa mimicking China's hasty rise into a formidable power amidst the world's other current and emerging superpowers. Besides, finally, you'd be looked, you won't be looked down upon as third world anymore. Personally, I'd like to see all those colonial powers that stole from the continent either pay back or return all that gold, diamonds, oil and other resources that helped make them become the wealthy nations they are today. Boy, if you'd unite you'd own the US and a decent chunk of European economies in GDP overnight. By uniting, you'd have a greater bargaining power, distribute wealth fairly and equally. You'd become a force not to mess with, don't you see? Your tiny countries are being bullied right now for your resources. Who'd bully you if you become a super state? Just look at what's happening in the Middle East right now. It's time for this message of unity to spread, not just Africa, but the entire Middle East. Not to bring democracy, not to help the local populations, but to protect American interests and justify their reasons for being here. The 